Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Wayman Long. Um, people also call me Norman, maybe because uh, I'm not tall enough. So, so I like to feel tall, you know. <laughs> and uh, today's topic is about um, a patch set that I've done a few years ago, but uh, I just, I, but I don't have, at that time, I don't have the time to follow up and and now um, I, I want to continue to pursue this patch set. And so I'm going to give an overview of what it is and why I'm working on this. So locking in user space. Um, in user space, a lot of application use uh, the uh, PFAT API provided by GDPC to do locking, um, like the PFAT mutant lock, uh, VWI lock or conditional variable, and and they also have a spin lock that actually spin in user space. Um, the top three are the most frequently used by uh, uh, by the application. Uh, spin lock is also used by some application, but but normally isn't used as much. The problem with that is because um, there 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 are a number of problems you want to try to spin a lock in user space. So the first fee are sleeping lock. So when you cannot acquire the lock, you have to go to the kernel to sleep uh, and, and wait for uh, uh, the current lock holder to release the lock so that uh, you can acquire it again. And for a number of uh, large enterprise application, like Auto, SAP, HANA, et cetera, they implement their, their own locking code um, because uh, they want to squeeze out as much of uh, the performance as possible from, from the Linux kernel. Uh, the GDP code, code is fine, but the fact that they have to conform exactly to the POSIX standard, that adds some overhead to, um, to it to make sure that it really conforms to all the different conditions that are specified in the standard. Um, if you implement your own locking code, you can skip some of those that are not relevant to you. So as a result, it will be generally a bit faster than just using the, the GDPC API. But, but then, of course, you need to maintain your own locking code, which is not, it's not a trivial task because uh, locking code can be tricky sometimes, especially if you, you want to uh, squeeze out as much performance as possible. And, and all these locking API, uh, at least for the GDPC, they use the, the field text API provided by the kernel. Uh, field text is uh, fast user space mutex. And, and this API are used by, to implement the sleeping lock. Uh, some older application, they may also use the, um, the system file semaphore API to implement the locking, but uh, it's generally slower than using the Futex API. So, what is the, um, the advantage or disadvantage of doing um, locking using the spinning lock or the, or the sleeping lock? Um, in user space, we generally advise people to use a uh, sleeping lock because uh, unless the, the lock critical session is really small and you are kind of sure that uh, not many uh, lock waiter or ma not many fair are going to try to acquire the lock at the same time, then you can use a spin lock. Uh, it's generally faster than using a sleeping lock like mutex. But then uh, you never know. Um, the one of the reason why I I want to pursue this project is because uh, we are helping to um, to run some certification tests for one of our uh, ISV partner, and one of the tests they they have is that they have a spin lock in user space, and we have to run hundreds of fed trying to acquire a spin lock. That caused a lot of problem. And the time span on the locking code itself can go up to 
80 or 90 percent of the CPU time uh, in the spin off. So uh, that also means that in some extreme cases, it is possible that there is a user space spin off, but then uh, it get heavily contented and it limit the, the, the efficacy and performance if that really happens. So uh, I, I try to, what I'm talking about here is to provide an alternative between a sleeping and spinning lock that kind of uh, hopefully have the best of both well. Um, but anyway, um, for a spinning lock, the problem with that is uh, you, you can't really have a fair spinning lock in user space because of the fact that um, a user frag can get PMD at any time. So if you are spinning a lock, you will fair lock, that means you have to follow a particular order. If, if one of the lock waiter get PMD, then any lock waiter behind it can't move forward, and that can be a problem. So uh, most user space spin lock are uh, unfair lock. And with unfair lock, the problem is that um, you have a lot of cache line contention because you, all the locker are spinning on the same lock cache line. So you have cache line bouncing around all over the places that causes performance problem for the, for the application. And also, unfair lock also had a problem of being unfair that you can have lock starvation, which is, uh, which sometimes can happen depending on, especially on the numeral system. Uh, with sleeping lock, the, the main problem you have is the waiter wake up latency. Uh, oh, so, uh, yeah, it sometimes can take tens to even 100 microsecond be, um, before um, the, the waiter can really wake up and start running. So, and sleeping lock I did also have the problem of lock starvation. Um, in the Linux channel itself, we basically solve the lock cache line contention problem by using uh, a queuing lock, the queue spin lock, and also the uh, the VWI lock itself is is a also a, a queuing lock. So we don't need to s not all the waiter need to spin on the same lock cache line at the same time. So it's kind of eliminate the the lock contention problem. Um, and although I said that um, we do not advise to use uh, a fair lock in user space, uh, there are people, I saw a, a GDFC patch, I think maybe years ago, that tried to implement uh, a fair lock in, in the GDFC. Uh, I don't know the current status, but um, um, again, I don't believe it's uh, if we really start to get contented, uh, um, then what I talk about about being uh, the lock waiter uh, con preemption problem can cause problem with those kind of uh, fair lock. Okay, and the problem with uh, the wake up latency is that it limit the the maximum locking rate you can achieve with a sleeping lock. Um, so in order to acquire a lock, uh, you, you have to wake up the, the, the lock waiter and the lock waiter has to come from the, from the kernel and then go up to the user space to try to acquire the lock. Or you can also have some kind of lock stealing going on and in that case, uh, uh, another flag can come in and steal the lock, but then when the lock waiter wake up from the kernel, he find the lock is not available anymore, and then you have to go back to the kernel to sleep. Um, and also for application that need to scale up to um, large number of files on the system, large number of CPU, um, there, there is a dynamic going on that whether you should use a spinning lock or the sleeping lock. So on the one hand, a spinning lock, it if not many fat are contained at the same time, it will probably be faster. But if the number of fat containing a lock increases, um, then you have all sorts of uh, cache side contention and lock waiter or 
no holder preemption problem going on. And, but then with a slipping lock, you kind of limit the way uh, how many locking operation you can done per second and and that, so you have to make a trade off uh, which which one is the more likely scenario and to decide whether you you want a slipping lock or a slip or a spin lock. So uh, this talk is about um, implementing a kind of spinning lock in user space by <coughs> with the assistance from the kernel. So I sent out a patch uh, about mm, two years ago. At that time, I called it the throughput optimized uh, field text. Uh, now I change it the name to optimistic spinning field, field text uh, because it's what is actually happening in the kernel. So uh, um, before that, I want to talk about um, the field text in general. There are two main kind of field texts in the kernel. One I call the the way weak field text. So basically, when you call the field text, call the field text system call with the field text way um, command, um, your field text is going to slip. And then when the lock holder uh, at the time when the lock holder releases the lock, it, it will see that there is a waiter in the kernel, and then you have to call the the field text wake, um, call the field text system call with the field text wake command to wake up the the sleeping uh, lock waiter. So that's why I call it the wake wake uh, field text. And there is another type of field text in kernel called the called the priority inversion field text. Those Field tests are used for mainly by the real-time application to make sure that the higher priority task get always get priority to execute first and get the, the lock first. Um, but the problem with that field test is the performance is can be horrible compared with the, the regular uh, wave field tests. So uh, so it is only used in, in certain cases where we really, you really need the real-time uh, to, to limit the, the maximum latency your application can have. Um, and both type of field types require the lock waiter to sleep in the kernel until the lock holder uh, release the lock and call into the kernel to wake up the, the, the lock waiter. Uh, optimistic spin field tech is a new kind of field text that uh, I introduced in my test set, which is a kind of a hybrid spinning and Sleeping lock. The, the basic idea is that if the lock holder is is actually running, that means that uh, it, it make forward progress and eventually it will release a lock. And in the foreseeable future, so in that case, it may be more efficient to spin on it and wait until the lock waiter release a lock before um, instead of just sleeping and let the uh, lock hook hold the wake, up, wake you up. So in that case, um, it will the, all the lock waiter will spin uh, in the kernel, but uh, they, they will, inside the kernel, they use the mutex as a queue, so they line up in the queue. Only the first, um, first one in the queue, which is the mutex lock holder, will spin on the field text. So at any one time, we only want one or, or maybe sometimes two task to spin on the lock itself. We don't want more than that. Otherwise, you have uh, all sorts of uh, cast line contention problem. Uh, in the rare case that the lock holder are actually sleeping, maybe it got PM'd it, or uh, it is waiting on an IO operation, then in that case, there is no problem to continue spinning in the, in the kernel because we don't know when it will get broken up. So in that case, all the uh, lock waiter in the kernel will go to sleep, just like the lock holder. Um, the reason why we need to do it in the kernel is the fact that uh, in the kernel, we can check the, the task structure to see if the task is actually running or not. But in user space, there is currently no facility for you to know if a task is actually running or it get is sleeping. And actually, I talked to uh, one of the lead GDC developer and 
he said that he, he actually we like to have a some kind of interface so that he can know whether a task is sleeping or or running so that he can implement some kind of um, spinning of the next spinning in user space. Um, the the OS view text that uh, was introduced in this patch set can support the implementation of both mutex and midway log, but um, it can currently it cannot support the the condition variable, but it can support the mutex part of the condition variable. Uh, excuse me, uh, single yeah. question. Uh, uh, I just wanted to ask because you told that if uh, the thread is waiting for I/O, then mm -hmm. the spinning is not being taken in this optimistic spinning mutex, because we don't know when the I/O is going to be finished. Yes. This sounds rather like a pessimistic rather than optimistic approach because if in this new, if we if you if you consider the new devices which we have like Optane etc., well the the I/O is quite fast and in optimistic. <laughs> Approach, you would assume it is quite no, no, no. soon finished. If you are talking about the new type of source device like persistent memory, the, the CPU, the task is actually running, is calling to a function. The function will look up, will search the, the, um, the persistent memory device to find the right page and copy it out. So um, that is done within the task context. So it, the task is not sleeping. What I mean by waiting for I/O is like source device. You have to actually um, call into a device driver, and you have to issue some command to the source device, and then the task have to actually sleep, waiting for an interrupt to happen before you can get the data. Then in that case, the task go to sleep. But if the ta task is um, trying to copy data out from persistent device, it's not sleeping. Okay, so every time the task will go, to the, the the task holding the the, the mutex will go to sleep. The anyone who is waiting for this will also go to sleep. Yes, to avoid yes. the spinning, and yes. there would be no way to control this. So, um, that is how the optimistic spinning work in the kernel right now. Mm -hmm. So, if you are um, in in the kernel mod, in the kernel module, you call, a, call try to lock a mutex. It will do exactly the same thing. If the task is running, it will spin on it. If the task go to sleep, it will go to sleep also. So we just follow what the current uh, mm -hmm. convention are in the kernel. Okay, thank you. And a lot of block devices that are really fast have a polling mode where they, the task doesn't sleep, so that would probably address your concerns too. So when you ask questions, um, the quest from the um, video uh, to stand up and ask to speak, please. Okay, <coughs> why we want to have this kind of new field text? Um, because in terms of performance, there are two main problems with the use of uh, the wave wake field text uh, in user space log. Uh, the first problem is that, uh, what I actually talked about before, that the log waiter had to put to sleep and wait for uh, the, the log holder to call into kernel to wake up. So it take time, and there's a certain latency involved, and and most working code will allow some kind of um, lock stealing, so that a lock in user space, when you try to acquire the lock and see that if the lock isn't <coughs> is free, you will try to acquire the lock. But if there are waiter waiting on the lock, uh, you will set a speed in the in the field text work, in that case, it had to go into the kernel also. And with the optimistic spinning field text, uh, one major difference is that it won't set the best thing that is sleeping until there is actually a task that go into sleep. Uh, in most case, the, the log waiter are spinning in the kernel, so it won't set the bit, so um, that will allow log sitting to happen without going into the kernel. I will show you some performance data that show you the difference between using the uh, wave field text and the OS field text. And with a heavily contented mutex, uh, you will find out that um, 
the, the locking performance are actually constrained by the, um, by a spin off the hex bucket, the filter hex bucket spin off in the kernel. And in some extreme case, I saw um, maybe 50% of time are spent to try to acquire the, or 50% 50, 50 more of the time uh, spent trying to acquire the, the hash bucket filter, uh, hash bucket spin off. With the uh, OS filter, um, the lower return in the kernel are not sleeping, so, uh, so you won't set the fast thing that you have to go to the kernel to acquire the lock. And you also don't need to go into kernel to wake up the, the lock, uh, the lock waiter that are sleeping. And that, that we give a lot of uh, overhead of using the OS build text. And they also allow the task to continue. Once you release a lock, you can move forward without worrying about going to kernel and wake other people up. And the design of the OS field text is, is that um, in, order we, in order to improve the locking throughput, um, there are a few uh, things we do for the OS field text. One is, up, as the name implies, optimistic spinning, which means that if the task is running, it will spin in the kernel without uh, going to sleep. And another thing is it encourage lock stealing, so you can steal in the in the in the user space, uh, because uh, you don't say that if the field tech doesn't say that there there's a greater in the kernel that you need to go to a kernel to wake it up, um, then you can do lock stealing in the user space. And we also al allow that there is an option for the OS field tech uh, to allow you to do either the kernel locking or the o OS locking. Kernel locking means you actually acquire the lock in the kernel, um, and then you go back up. But the problem with that is you add some additional latency the w from the transition, the corner switch, oh no, not the corner switch, the transition from the kernel to user space to the, your overall lock whole time. So um, there's another option that you, you, once you find out that the lock is free, uh, you, do, you didn't acquire the lock in the kernel instead you go up to the user space and try to acquire a lock in the user space. Um, that, um, the sample code that I implement is uh, to do user space locking a few times, you still cannot acquire the lock, then do the locking in the kernel. And in order to, go to avoid the problem of lock starvation, there is a built-in lock hang-up mechanism to force lock hang-up to the, to, to the first task in the waiting queue. So uh, in this way, you disallow um, lock from the user space to, to see the lock, and you make sure that it, it will get it, it will be given to the first waiter in the, in the locking queue. And but then, they, of course, you, in this case, you do the locking in the kernel, and so there's some additional latency involved. Uh, so it's only, this mechanism is only invoked if it, it wait for a certain, it can't acquire the lock after a certain period of time. Um, currently, I, I think I set the threshold to be around five milliseconds or so. If you can't acquire the lock at that time, given that time, then it will force the lock hang off, turn off to happen when the lock is free. Um, the OS filter itself is similar to the PI filter in semantic in how it works. So in order to acquire the lock, um, you have to automatically put your thread ID to the filter work. And this is how um, the lock waiter in the kernel find out which process you are. Um, so once you are done with the lock, um, um, the, the third bullet is that the option they can choose to whether do the locking in user space or do the locking in the kernel. And at a lock time, what you need to do is just hear the field text. And as long as the, the lock waiter 
there is a bit uh, in the field tax call, field tax waiter. If you're not set, then that is all you need to do, just clear it. If you're set, then you have to go into kernel to do the log. And the code is pretty easy for the mutex. Um, OS mutex also support a rewrite log, uh, what I call a, a shared log. So you want to acquire a writer log, you acquire an exclusive log. And you do a reader log, you acquire a shared log. So um, this slide show you what you can do um, to acquire a shared log. Uh, a shared log is um, indicated by a special bit in the Vitex work, indicating that it is a shared log instead of an exclusive log. And there are some options um, that change the, uh, the code a, a bit to, to allow you to prefer the reader or prefer the writer more. And at a log time, you just have to document the reader count, but the count reach zero. Um, you have to atomically clear the field text share fed as well. Um, if somehow they are waiter in the kernel, then it get a bit more complicated in how you can do that log. Uh, I won't go into the detail here. Um, uh, if anyone has interest, we can talk um, after the presentation. Okay, these are some of the performance data that I get using a um, user space micro benchmark that I will, uh, that are integrated into the, the perf bench um, tools. So uh, it's basically just a two socket for the eight core 96 bus system. Um, with 96 mutex locking set, and I measure how many locking operations you can done uh, per second. Uh, I use the the WZ mutex, the wave mutex is a my implementation of the the mutex, which is relatively straightforward. And then I use the OS mutex, and I also use the glibc, the the PFAT API in the glibc to do the locking, and compare the result. Uh, what you can see from the slide is that um, the OS field text is about 20% faster than the WS field text, but it depends on how, how long is your critical section. The longer it is, the, the performance delta increases. Uh, I will show that in, this, in the next slide. And one thing you can observe is that um, the number of system calls that need to make into a kernel. Um, the field tech lock system call for both WS field tech and OS field tech is about the same. VV field tech has a little bit more sys call to do the locking. Uh, but in terms of the unlock sys call, you can see that uh, in the case of VV field tech, I have to go in the kernel about 13 million times to do the unlock. But with the OS field tech, it's only 19 times. So that is a big difference. And most of the performance benefits I believe it's due to the fact that I don't need to go to the kernel to wake up the, the log waiter. Um, the, last, the last row in the table, it just means that the number of uh, kernel log that I need to, number of log that I actually acquire in the kernel itself, user space. As I said before, um, my current sample implementation of OS field test is that I do four user space uh, log attempt before I switch to do it in the, in the kernel. And in the kernel, if it can't acquire the log over certain, after a certain period of time, it will force a log handoff to make sure that log starvation won't happen. Okay, this is another slide that shows the, uh, the relative performance when I increase the critical session length, which in this case, it's just the number of pause instructions that are issued in the, uh, the log critical section. So you can see that as I increase the length of the critical section, the locking rate uh, decreases. But um, for, for the wave field text, it, it decreases faster than the OS field text. So the, the performance benefit actually increases if you have a bigger log critical section. Oh, in that case, um, the other 
because this system only have 96 uh, virtual C 96 logical CPU. So at any one, one time, you can only have 96 thread running. Uh, you, you will have more thread than that, then some of them has to be either get preempted or sort of sleeping in the kernel waiting for a log. Yeah, what we observed, so until you have uh, number of thread, concurrent thread, equal to number of cores you have on the machine, it, it can scale. Every time you have bigger, and on my scale, we have thousand users, mm -hmm. it will just go down, of course. Uh, okay, I, I will, I, let me see, did I? I don't remember, I, I, I have won some tests uh, with number of threads bigger than the number of, number of CPU. Um, the OS filter still perform better than the, um, the very few texts, um, but I uh, didn't have the data, data with me right now. So, uh, and especially on read dialogs, when you have reader counters, even you have read only workload, so it's just this, having this counter, mm -hmm. you just kill him, kill it by CPU cache line synchronization, mm -hmm. and so everything just going down by half. Uh, yes, read write log is a problem because in general, the performance of read log are worse than mutex. Uh, I can show you that is um, the performance I got with my own implementation of the the very few text, uh, and then with the OS few text. And in this particular case, I, I have a equal number of uh, read, reader and writer trying to acquire the read log and write log uh, at the same time, again, with 96 fat. And you can see that GDPC actually performed better than my sample implementation of the very big log. That was, uh, uh, I think, about Two years ago, GDPC undergo a major rewrite of the rewrite log code. Um, before that, uh, what I remember is my very code performed better than GDPC. And now with the new uh, GDPC rewrite log code, it performed better than my sample uh, very weak log implementation. But still, um, the OS field tag is significantly faster than the other two. Yeah, so just try five, 500 threads. Mm? Try 500 threads. Okay, and see um, the I, I will run some tests with, uh, when you have over subscribe, you have more thread than the, the actual number of CPU available. Um, uh, no, just, that time just by the fact that we have counter inside and it's one counter for all threads. Yeah, that's one with the count. You will synchronize all CPU cores in the cache? The way that, uh, no, no, actually. Uh, because it's, uh, the way it works, it will try to acquire a lot of user space. If you can't, it goes into a kernel to do it. No, but wait, you are not even looking. So every time you have readers coming and read write log, mm -hmm. you have to increase number of readers, right? It's no. coming, leaving, coming, leaving. So depending on how you implement your view log, um, there. There are many ways you can implement a rewrite log. Uh, instead, um, instead of a mutex, mutex is pretty easy. Uh, rewrite log is far more complicated. You can have a very sophisticated uh, growth firm to implement rewrite log uh, in user space. And, and the GDPC rewrite log implementation in one example is pretty complex. And that is how they, they improve the performance with the new implementation. Um, with the old field text, um, the uh, the, rewrite, the user space rewrite log code is pretty mm, more simple than what you can what will be if okay. you use the the very few so well, Just try with five hundred concurrent threads and see what the result and then yeah and yeah the way that uh, um, maybe I show you in the next slide. Oh, oh sorry, wait, I had one question on that previous yeah. one. Oh, oh, no, this might be it. I was just going to ask you if you had breakdowns of the readers and writers to see if they're all fair, but that might be this slide. No, the previous one, yeah. No, but I think, I think you might be the next slide that actually answered it. So I wondered if, if are all three of these implementations fair? Uh, because not if really. Because if you're for example, it, it could be all the readers. Not really. It's not, not really. Not really. Uh, I can show you. I know to <laughs> see the fairness <laughs> of the different log implementation. Uh, what I did is, um, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the previous slide, the locking fat kind of alternate between 
doing a read log and doing a write log. So, uh, but in this case, I dedicate half of the thread to doing the read log, half of the thread to doing write log exclusively. And this is what happened. Um, would the, you prefer the reader? Uh, the very few tech information, uh, there is no salvation. You just can't acquire the writer log at all. And similarly for GDC. So log salvation really can happen. Uh, with the OS few tech, because of the uh, implement uh, log handout mechanism in the kernel, so we we'll make sure that um, no matter how Every uh, log waiter will have a chance to acquire the log. And so you, you see that even though um, the uh, current implementation definitely prefer waiter, waiter more than the waiter, uh, the waiter can still acquire the log. Um, and even so, uh, there's no log star reason. But um, the second diagram, the second uh, table show you the, the other case and you prefer the writer. In this case, uh, both the, w, the very few implementation become much more fair. Um, so writer log, in this case, writer log I prefer. For the OS few text, um, it still prefer the reader um, because of the implementation. Uh, I can choose the implementation to prefer the writer a bit more. But anyway, it, in the preferred writer mode, it, uh, its performance is actually better than in the uh, in the preferred reader mode. So that's why currently the preferred writer is the, the default. And for glibc, it's better than the, the preferred reader mode, but still um, there is some kind of log salvation going on if you are reader. Okay, um, the, there are still more work I, that I need to do to complete the, um, the OS few text test set. Um, this slide lists the, um, the work that I need to do before it's ready for sending out the patch. Um, the first thing, the most important one, is that I need to find a user for the OS few text. It can be I, I had attempt to try to add into the GDPC, but uh, um, it's not so easy sometimes to convince the GDPC maintainer to take it. Um, and then another possibility is to find an um, application that can use the OS view text, like um, the open source focus SQL or some other um, database, open source database product. And another thing that I need to do is um, all the, the free text syscall uh, support a timeout argument. So you you can go in your kernel, try to log it. Um, if the timeout, if it exceeds a certain timeout limit, it will go back out and return an error to you saying that it just wait too long before you can acquire the log. And in order to, to support that, I need to add a Mutual log, log variant that has a timeout argument, which currently we, we don't have that. Uh, the only log that have a timeout is the RT mutex, but mutex doesn't have the, the timeout. And I I also want to investigate different way of try to do more spinning in the in the user space instead of just focus most mainly in the kernel, because you can acquire the log user space is it will be it will, it's faster than going to the kernel and go back up. And there are currently um two or different alternatives that I'm looking into. Um I can use a bit in the filter web to indicate that um the task is running. That is what the GZIPC guy want to have a mechanism to do that. And so it is one way to do it is to use use uh, the, the OS view text. Um, and another way that I'm looking, uh, another alternative that I'm investigating is um, I'm, I'm trying to allow one locker to spin in the user space and one and only one only. Uh, you have more 
Locker trying to spin the user space, it will create a lot more test line contention problem. But you have just this one in the, in the user space and one in the kernel, then the situation is not that bad. So um, hopefully, um, I will have something ready in, in a few months to send out um, to the kernel community. And that is pretty much it. That's the end of my presentation. And any other question that you you have? I have one question. Yeah. You have you have you said the timeout value. What mm -hmm. was it? How, what's the timeout value you mentioned? One point five. No, the timeout. Oh, sorry. Uh, the field text itself allows you to specify a timeout value. The timeout is, can be any value. Oh, so you can time out for one millisecond so or time out for one choice. hour. Hmm. But um, in other, because this is what the field text API provides, uh, I need to be consistent with that. And in order to really do that, especially you go into sub micro microsecond level, then I really need to have a, a, type, a variant of mutual log that have a timeout argument. Oh. Okay, um, thank, you, thank you very much for your time. Uh, hopefully, um, uh, I will have something to send out in the, in the near future. Okay, thanks.